Tobias, such a pleasure to speak with you. The film is really great. And one thing I found interesting about the film is that the viewer can have two different experiences if they know the real life story. Um, but it's interesting either way. You're kind of seeing, uh, you know, the reasoning behind these deaths and the, the failings of the healthcare system, or you're, you know, shocked by what transpires. What was the biggest challenge in adapting this true life story? I think the, the biggest challenge was for me to not fall in the traps of just referencing other serial killer films. There are so many great ones out there. I mean, um, if you look at it, one of my favorite films is, is, is Seven by David Fincher. We've seen uh, Anthony Hopkins do a brilliant portrayal of Hannibal Lecter. Um, so we, and there's, there's this, right now there's a wave of true crime stories. Um, um, and I think that for us as storytellers to enter the darkness of these true crime stories, we have a responsibility to find a human reason to enter you know, a light in there, and Amy was that light for me, the hope and the humanity that she brought to the table. Um, and the biggest challenge is that was to just have faith in that that was enough, that we didn't need the cheap thrills, but, but just insisting on telling the story as it unfolded for Amy um, would be enough. That was, that was probably, well, my biggest worry and the biggest challenge. That's perfectly put. I and, mean, you know, people are so fascinated by serial killers. But so I thought it was very interesting that, you know, Amy is at the forefront and Jessica does such a great job with the performance. And you did a really good job of showing her motivation. She's going through so much, but her family, you know, keeps her going. And how important was it to show that portrayal of a real loving mother? Well, you know, when I read about Amy the first time, she reminded me of my mother. I have an older brother who's almost two years old, uh, older than me, and um, and our mom worked in the in the healthcare system in Denmark, and would still, you know, without our dad being around, would still provide us with a great life and great opportunities. And she would struggle so much. And the strength of that, uh, of these <laughs> unsung heroes, you can say, uh, really struck me. Um, I loved that. The reason behind this was basically that Amy really needed a friend. And Charlie was that friend. And if you talk to the real Amy, that friendship was real. And she used that friendship to stop him at the end. And the logic behind that is an extremely human uh, logic, I believe. And, and, and that, that, for me, was the most important thing to focus on. So being honest to the struggle that she's going through would set her up to the needs she had and would prove how strong she was even more. Yeah, that's wonderfully put. And I think what makes Eddie's performance so haunting is that the character, you know, is a good friend. He is, he has charming moments. It's very nuanced in the story you tell, but you know, he's also this demented person, which is kind of the, the scariest of all that, you know, he could be anywhere and he could exist anywhere. And, and, and that is the, the scary part. And, and I also think that that is for me a way in, I'm not American, I don't know that much about the American healthcare system, but I know about being a human in a system. And, and we can see this um, everywhere. And I guess it's just a reminder of living up to the, res the responsibility as human beings um, to speak up if we, if we see or feel that the system is turning, um, is turning against us. And then my last question for you, the interrogation scene with Eddie was so wild. Uh, how was it like getting that freak out out of him? Well, you know, we had rehearsed all scenes in the script except for that one. And we kind of played, we bet everything we had on that we would, if we got all the other scenes right, we would, there would be a logic to this. So he didn't really tell me what he had in mind, and I didn't really tell him what I had in mind. Uh, so when he showed up on the day, I would, without him knowing or pre preparing for it, I would handcuff him to the table, which would limit his movement. Um, but doing that, it made a sound, cluck. And I remember in the, prepara in, the, in, in the rehearsal of that, you know, as we started the day, that sound I saw in Eddie's eyes right away, oh, there's an idea. So when he finally started to use that, um, at the end of the scene and the I can't rhythm that he goes, grows into, um, you know, I was very impressed with, 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 with that. And, and, and to be honest, I had, after the second take, I got worried that he was, whether he was okay or not because he seemed so much in it. 
So I went in there and then he must have sensed that I felt that way because Eddie looked up and he looked me in the eye, smiled and said, I'm all right, pal. And then he looked down again and went back into the darkness. And that, you know, that was one of the strongest experiences I've had on set.